Okay, in this video we're going to write the script to generate the rows of our amortization table. So we have the loop set up and it's going to go through as long as the current balance is greater than zero. So in other words, it stops once our balance hits zero. Okay, so let's, let's take a look at the table real fast. What we have is a payment column, which is going to be our payment counter. We have a column for our monthly payments, which we have a variable for our set already. Then we have, we, we basically just have to figure out how to calculate these right here. So the principal, the interest, and the interest paid. Um, the one I'm going to start with, well, the one that, yeah, the one we're going to start with is calculating the interest. Because what of your payment, okay, here, um, say you make a payment of $1,200. If 800 of it goes towards interests, interests, wow, goes towards interest, how much goes towards principal? So hopefully you said 400 or payment minus what goes towards interest. Okay, so that's the idea. So let's get, uh, let's get started on that. So we need to have our monthly payment. Now we already have this one, but remember that the user might make extra payments. So we're going to say the monthly payments actually the calculated monthly payment plus uh, any extra payment they make. And the amount that goes towards interest, so I'm going to actually just call that towards interest. Does that make sense, right? Towards interest. And the formula for that is going to be I divided by 12. Remember, I is your interest rate divided by 12 times your current balance. Okay, so this calculates the portion of your monthly payment that goes towards the interest. Okay, after that we have what goes towards the balance and that's just going to be from your monthly payment after you've paid out what goes towards your interest the rest goes towards your balance. And then your current balance is going to equal, well, the current balance minus whatever went towards your balance. Okay, so in other words, you're going to take last month's balance, you're going to subtract off what goes towards the balance. So you make your payment, part of it's going to go towards the balance. Whatever goes towards the balance will be deducted from your balance. And that's going to be stored into your new current balance. All right, and then at the end, you then have a counter that will be incremented by one. So payment counter plus plus. Okay, so here, okay, we're going to display the row now. Okay, so very similar to how we did it above. So now these are, this is just the payment row. So we're going to have our row so this will be our payment column next will be our payment monthly payment column by the way there is no need to set a width on these because the width has been set in the uh, the rows above uh, from from up here, so there's no reason to set set the widths again. All right, now this is going to be your monthly payment, and I'm going to round it to two decimals. Okay, and I'm just going to save this row. All right, so the next one was what goes towards your principal towards, no, towards balance, I think that's what I called it. Then the next one is what goes towards interest. Then we have one, this is our total interest. Okay. 
I don't think I... I didn't do that part, did I? I right before current balance, right? Total interest equals the previous total interest plus whatever's going towards interest on this payment. Okay. And so that's towards interest, and then we have our current balance. Okay, I think that's it. All right, let's end the row. And okay, so payment counter goes up. We then stop once the current balance is zero, and we end, close the table, send that over to the div ID table, and we should be good. So let's save this and see what it looks like. Let's refresh. Okay, so we have, I did not save it again. Let's take a look. No, I saved it. Uh, let's go find out what happened. Okay, so we had a small error. Um, looking through it, and again, it's a spelling mistake. I am really bad at those, I guess. Uh, so under payment counter, I forgot the N, so now it's payment counter. Should work now, I hope. Um, so let's go take a look. So refresh. 180,000 and it did not fix the error so let's go back and find out why okay so I paused it I rewrote this part um, and it's working fine I probably should have written down what I wrote before just to to see what I had wrong thought maybe there was a spelling mistake as I tend to to make those but I didn't at least when I rewrote it everything works out Okay, so I haven't changed anything, at least I didn't, there's nothing really new, except maybe if I made some sort of spelling mistake, or if I used like a TR instead of a TD, I, I'm not really sure. So that's what I have right now. So let's save it, and let's go try it out. So 180,000, 30 years, calculate. So we have our month, or our loan amount, monthly payment, all right, if we paid extra. And then we are supposed to finish it off in 360 months. So if we go down to 360, we could see that our last payment, uh, the balance now is zero dollars. So at this point, the calculator is, is okay. We have one thing to tweak, and that's what happens if you make an extra payment. Because when you make your last payment, your balance should be zero. Okay, so let's see what happens when you make a payment of, say, an extra monthly payment of $10. Okay, notice what happens. Okay, that's weird. Well, that shouldn't happen, so I got to go and take a look at that. Okay, no need. I know. I know what it was. Uh, so let's go back um, here. See where it says monthly payment equals monthly payment plus extra. That means every time we go, this is not supposed to be in the loop. Okay, that's all. Not supposed to be in the loop. So let's bring that back up here and we should be okay now so please make that change take that out of the loop so 180,000 all right so we make an extra ten dollar payment per month okay so notice that the payment should be a thousand eighty nine which it is and but notice that we actually finish before 360 payments and that makes sense because we're making extra payments per month but notice that after when we make our last $1,089 payment, we actually went over. We got to fix that. So this is how we fix it. Okay, and you have to notice this, and then it should make sense. You have your, this is back to the original loan amount, or loan scenario. We have <clears throat> this balance of 1079 Now, notice that when you make our payment of 1070 sorry, seven, wow. 1073 is our last current balance. We make a $1,079 payment. 
Now the bank always wants their interest. Even on that last payment, they want their interest. So when you have a balance of 1,073, your last payment's not going to be 1,073. It's going to be 1,073 plus whatever you're going to owe them in interest. Because watch, if you were to take this number and add that number, you will get this. And that happens on every single loan. Okay? It's not just special for this. Your last, the month before your last, its balance, if you were to add that to the next month's interest, it should always equal your last payment. Okay. So when you make this extra $10 a month payment, okay, your payment's 1089 you owe 1041 So if you were to take 1041 plus 521 you should have 1047 well, you're paying way too much. And in fact, how much are you paying more? Well, exactly $42.14 more. So here's how you fix it. Okay. It's actually very simple. All right. In here, uh, after, let's take away some of this space. After the towards interest, you're going to have a little if. You're going to say if the monthly payment is greater than the current balance because that's going to happen on your last payment. When that happens, which means you're in your last payment, you would reset the monthly payment to be whatever the current balance is plus whatever's supposed to go towards interest in that last month. Because no matter it, whether you're making an extra monthly payment or not, this is true for every single loan. Your last payment should be whatever that current balance is at that time plus whatever goes towards interest. So does that fix our problem? Again, notice that we are finishing at $42.14 over. Okay, so that means our monthly payment really should be $1,041 and $521, so $1,047 and some change. Let's see what happens. Okay. Make an extra $10 payment. 1047 and 5 cents. And that looks good. So everything works out. Uh, I don't think there's really anything else. So what I'm going to do now is just going to go back to the CSS, take away those uh, borders because we don't need them anymore. So let's see. So I don't need. Maybe I'll keep the gray one. I could take away this one though. Definitely take away the orange and the blue. I'm going to keep the containers border. And I want to do a uh, text align center. And I'm probably going to put a background in there, but I don't really need one now. Uh, so let's take a look at the finished product. Oh, I can get rid of, rid of this loan info and table stuff. So let's do that real fast. Okay. So we can get rid of that. And this. Okay, refresh. Okay, so let's play around with it. You can play around now and see what happens. Uh, enter a valid loan amount. Uh, okay. See what happens when you enter like negative 855. Enter a valid extra payment. So all these things are working out. Make a $1 payment. Let's see what happens if you make an extra $1 payment. Does it change much? $1,000 or 1080 does that save us anything? No, but it does make our last monthly payment a lot less. So you get to save about $1,000 overall. But, you know, you're only making a one extra $1 payment. Oh, that, that's actually not that bad. Make an extra $1 payment over 360 months. That costs you $360. But notice that your last monthly payment, you're saving yourself $1,000. So overall, you've, you've saved yourself about what four four hundred bucks like that? No, six hundred bucks. Yeah. Okay, so that is the end. Um, if you have any questions, send me an email.